hi again and welcome to Yesterday Today Sewing where I take the patterns of past decades and try and draft them out, make them up and add them to my current day wardrobe. Now I flew down home for my brother's birthday a month or two ago and stayed with my mum and one of the things that I particularly asked her for when when I was staying with her was could we go through old photos but really what I wanted was photos of my mum's mum and the sort of thing she wore because I always thought that my ma was a really really stylish woman I love a lot of her fashions and so that's what we did we spent a lovely afternoon with one of my sisters as well going through some of these old family photos getting mum recorded as she talked about them and having a look at some of the photos of my ma and what she wore. So today I thought let's give something like that a go because way back when I started doing this I had got online I discovered this lovely store way overseas called Mood Fabric and I ordered in some fabrics that I could never find here in Australia. I did it way back before COVID hit, thinking that I might get time to actually stay home and do all of this stuff. But because there were summer fabrics, I wasn't quite ready to do that. I figured I'd start on some of my winter clothing. So what I have here is a lovely linen rayon blend. It's close enough to a 50-50 of each, which gives it the beautiful properties of both. It should have the breathability and sort of the richness of a linen with a bit of the stiffness, but the rayon gives it a lovely drape as well. I love the colour of this. I like the idea of a check. And so when I looked at this, I thought, I need to try like a shirt waist or a shirt dress. And then I got to looking at pictures with mum and sure enough, you know, when my ma was around the 1940s, 50s time, which was around the time my mum and uncle were born. Sure enough, that's the sort of thing she was wearing. So I found, here we go, this picture of this lovely wide collared dress that mum probably made. I understand she did a lot of those sewing. That's my mum there. She looks like she might have been maybe five, six, Ooh, seven even, which would put it around 52 maybe. That's my, my Uncle Ray. Hi, Uncle Ray. Uh, when he was quite a bit younger with his teddy bear. Um, and I look, I love that dress. Look at that lovely collar with the contrast and all of that. The flared skirt, buttons down the front. This is probably long sleeve, so probably a bit more winter. So if I'm to do something like that, I might make a few adjustments. I might go three quarter sleeves. Um, which in this fabric should be fine for summer as well as giving me a little bit of sun protection by having a slightly longer sleeve. Um, but sadly to have maybe not quite as wide a colour as this, and I won't contrast it because I don't have the right fabric to do a contrast with this, but, you know, something along those lines. The other one I found that I thought was quite lovely is this lovely, probably a gingham dress, uh, and it's almost got this white, bib sort of arrangement at the neckline with, with the high collar. Again, I rather like that, although for this one, possibly a bit less so, although I like not having the buttons up. So anyway, these, this one especially is probably my sort of inspiration. Um, I will look to have a belt. I will certainly look to make a button front, but whether I do buttons the whole way down or not, some sort of an interesting collar arrangement, if not quite this, maybe sort of sleeves to there or maybe just past elbow, something like that. So definitely the flared skirt. So there we go. Mar, it was my inspiration, my fashion inspiration. I wish I could see the hat you're wearing in that as well. And I wish I'd got your handbag, but there we go. So then, I thought I would just do a little bit more research to see what was around. Went on to the pattern uh, fandom. It's an old wiki that people 
take pictures of old patterns. I will link it down in the details below if you're interested in finding that. And it's a wealth of information of pattern covers. So it's not the actual patterns included, it's the pattern envelopes with the pictures. People will post them there, but it gives you really good inspiration to think about um, what was being made in the time. And I found this buttrick pattern. I know I can do this simple rolled collar like that. I've done a couple of those. But what I really liked is this sort of shaped yoke um, or even a shaped godet, uh, gore, I'm not quite sure what you'd call it, um, to give a bit of flair to the skirt. As much as I like that, I don't think I'm going to quite have enough fabric to do that particular one, so I don't know, maybe another time, but I do rather like that. The other picture I found was this one here from 1951, and I think this sort of sums up really what, what I'm wanting in this dress. It's got the flared skirt, it's got the buttons down the front, it's got an interesting pointy collar, and I really love the pointy cuffs on this sort of three-quarter sleeve. So I think that is going to give me enough to work with to start drafting my pattern and to see how it goes for my nice grandmother-inspired 1950s shirt dress. So come and join me as I draft as I make it up. So as you can see, I'm working from the block pattern I made. Uh, that came from a fitting shell. I think it was a Vogue fitting shell that I had then adjusted to my sizes. And I figured the fit was about what I wanted for this, even where the darts are. Can't remember what I was doing with that other pattern. I might have been checking out the back neckline and how it worked with the collar and things like that. The collar I drafted from the same book that I've used before. It was a fairly simple collar draft, so, you know, it all came together pretty well. I do like adding the one and a half centimetre seam allowance to my drafts. It just makes it so much easier when it comes to cutting out to not be guessing what my seam allowance is. So here we go. We have a pattern, fingers crossed. Um, it should be good. What I'm debating is whether I do the front facing as one. I've stuck it to it, but if I decide it's getting a bit too tight with my layout and I need to do some adjustment, I can take this front facing off and work it from there. I have my collar piece cut out. I should be fine. Butter's back is pretty straightforward. My sleeve I've cut as three quarters and I've made a cuff that will turn up. Um, I think hopefully that should work as well. And then I have a full skirt. I'm going to make it a six score skirt. I will not have the buttons down the front and I will just have to check whether this fits. So now what I need to think about is how much of a mock-up do I need to do? I know that the shirt will fit me. My gut instinct is telling me just go for it. It'll be fine. It'll fit. I might just give myself slightly wider seams at the side in case I need to do it. Um, and if I have any issues with the fit, if I need to redraft the collar a little bit, it won't be much fabric. So I think, I think I can get away with it. I'm just going to do it and keep out in faith. See what happens. Disasters are always possible, but I really hope not. Fortunately, disasters didn't happen. 
as you can see, the layout here really isn't too wasteful. I ended up using the whole fabric. Um, you see the front, back sleeves, one of the pockets and collar. The rest of the fabric is the three skirt pieces. Um, basically, the front and back skirt pieces were put on the fold and the sides were put on the straight grain selvage which meant that yeah six score skirt worked really really nicely i'm doing it on the floor here simply because i don't have anywhere else to lay out my fabric with a decent space As you can see, very little fabric left over, which is why I really hoped that the collar would work properly. I prefer to use a woven interfacing for my things. I don't always use iron-on, but it certainly is easier. Here I'm just stay stitching all of the curved edges and I try to remember to go from outside in all the time um, so that it doesn't stretch while I sew. Here's Laurie trying to help me be a, um, a neat and sensible sewer. I try to remember to finish off all the loose threads properly as I go along. So here I've just knotted the point of the dart and now I'm Passing it through the dart itself so that easy bird. the loose threads are hidden. And yes, Laurie doesn't always make it easy, but hey, at least she's not trying to grab the needle this time. I decided to stick with hand finishing all of these edges so I'm just doing a very narrow hem on the facing edge of the top. I guess the stitch I'm using is closest to a felling than a hemming stitch. Um, again it's not going to be seen so it's not a really big problem I probably could have just machined it but as you've probably worked out by now I actually really enjoy hand sewing. So as you can see, a very neat finish to the edge. So here we go. The collar is on. And I do like the line of it. Again, I did it differently in the illustration I was going for. It had the seam there. I found it easier just to do the seam there with my very basic drafting skills. I had planned to match the stripe and somehow managed to completely miss it. I think I actually lined it up with the underside rather than there. So it's not quite how I had wanted it. Um, ideally I would have matched it there but you know so be it or if nothing else maybe I should have tried to match it at the back here where it's just slightly off and I probably could have done a better job of matching there but you know what I think it's pretty close and it is not too bad this is just one of those perfectionist things that I would have liked to have done a little bit better but you know that's not too bad I am going to do a side zip which means I will need to put the skirt on before I finish the side seam and put the sleeve in after all of that as well. So I think at this stage I now 
start to work on the skirt and start to get the full thing together before I do the side seams. Very exciting. So here we are. It's a new day. Actually, it's a few days now. Uh, we've had a few visits to the vet with Laurie. Um, looks like it's mostly hormonal. So we've tried to put her on a like birth control implant for Laura Keats. She did not like it. She ripped it out. Um, but anyway, at least she's home now. She seems to be recovering from her anaesthetic and hopefully we'll get all of this sort of nesting stuff sorted and perhaps less eggs. So anyway, I haven't got quite as much done on the dress, but as you can see, it is coming together. Hang on. These buttons aren't on yet. I'm just getting a feel whether these buttons that I had in my stash will be the right size. And I think they'll work actually. Um, so I will use those. The skirt is now on. Again, in retrospect, I probably would have cut it slightly differently had I had more fabric to deal with. The other thing I didn't realise when I was cutting it is there is this bit of a flaw in the fabric. And I would have tried not to have that on the centre front piece, even if I couldn't cut around it. Um, so that that's a bit disappointing. But there we go. At least in a full skirt, I don't think it will be a huge problem. So yesterday, about all I got done was to get that pocket in and now the side seams are ready to be sewn so I just thought I'd give the, the skirt a chance to hang while I couldn't do any more um, and now on this side I will sew a regular side seam on this side I'm going to have to be putting in a zip so what I will do is sew the pocket and down and then put the zip in here to the top of the pocket. So just from the underarm to around the top of the pocket. And um, hopefully that'll help me get into the dress. I am half wondering if I put the zip in upside down so that in actual fact, it has a little bit of extra opening down here. I know that's non-conventional and not what you would normally do. You'll have that bit of the zip hanging down, but that'll get lost in the pocket itself, I think. Um, and I really am quite inclined to do this and to give it a go and actually see whether I don't mind having a zipping upside down like that. As I reason through it, I think it should work. It might be a little weird and unusual, but hey, maybe that's just me. I'm weird and unusual and happy to try things like that. So anyway, we'll get all of that done and then we can get a start on the sleeves. So that is today's plan. Yeah, that's um, the bird equivalent of a cone of shame because she was, she had pulled out the implant that's between her wings. She needs that so she doesn't keep picking at it. She does not like it, but as you can see, it's not impeding her one bit. So with the zip, it's just a regular insertion on the side seam. I've basted the seam together. Um, now I'm just tacking the seam down in preparation for mach machining it by the side. Then I'll take the basting out the center seam. Makes for a really clean and easy finish. Fortunately, having tacked the zip in, it makes it pretty easy to sew, even if this is not just a bit of a time consuming fiddly bit to deal with, especially getting around the pocket, because of course I put the zip as far down as the pocket. But actually I thought it worked quite well. So there you go, up down zips are okay. Yep. Laurie tried to help me finish off my seams again. Very helpful she is. And last of all, it's putting in the sleeves. This is the cuff turnover that I'm sewing now. 
I ended up just hand stitching it down a little bit so that it sort of sits properly. I think in retrospect I would have liked to have given that cuff bit a little flare but you know I think it still looks quite nice. And yes, when Co Laurie's taking an interest in the sewing, I just don't want it anywhere near that needle while I'm sewing. Holes are never my favourite time. I sometimes wish I had a much more advanced machine that, machine that you just set up and it did the buttonholes without thinking about it. But I don't like hand sewing buttonholes either, so this is better than nothing. And yeah, it's just the annoying trying to knot off and thread through all of those spare threads so that they don't come undone. loves pins which is why she's down there helping helping me do my skirt best way to distract her from pins right so with her gone I can actually get on with getting my hem straight and there we go. I got my husband to film it just to make sure when I was actually wearing it, it pretty much looks straight. And again, station, mind the gap. Which then meant I could take my dress onto the train and finish off with just a nice narrow hem so I didn't lose too much of the length that I wanted. But what I need to think about now is the belt. On these pictures, it's kind of got a traditional narrower belt. On a picture of my ma, she's got a kind of wider belt. So I've managed to find this rather chunky, quite nice brown leather one. It works quite nicely with the color of the fabric, but it's not what I really had in mind. So I thought, well, why don't I try to make a wider belt something like this? So what I have done, <laughs> I went to Mood Fabric again and ordered stuff in from there. They had a really good sale on. I've managed to get some lovely wool fabrics. But while I was there, I also saw some of these lovely belt buckles that they had. So I decided I would also purchase a few of these to give it a go. The one I was particularly interested in is this one. It's a brass coloured, which will work quite nicely with the brass ones. I know Ma uses a probably self-coloured um, square clip, but I think this round one could look quite nice on there. And rather than go leather or a fake leather, I was thinking suede. Now I couldn't get real suede, but I did get this lovely faux suede uh, in a sort of olivey green colour, which I thought could look quite nice with this. So somehow I'm going to pair these up and make a something belt kind of like that. Shouldn't be too hard. Belts are just rectangles finished off on the edge and I've got a few... Um, what do you call those things you hammer in? Eyeless. But I could use these for brass coloured ones. It should look quite good. And I think that could make quite a nice belt alternative for my dress. So yeah, the belt is just a wide tube of it. 
quite enough, long enough to go around my waist with a bit of overlap. I ended up not using the eyelets. I found this fabric just making a hole in it tended to hold fine. So that kept it a lot simpler. And here we go, the finished dress. And boy, do I love this one. It's comfortable to wear, it's cool in summer, it provides a bit more warmth in winter. And with my little hat that I made a while ago, I love it. So, thank you for joining me on this 1950s plaid dress adventure. I hope you've enjoyed the journey and I hope you'll join me again for more vintage sewing adventures. Till later, bye.